Hey, this is Richard. I recently flew Hawaiian Air for the first time. Booked first class round trip tickets from Los Angeles to Honolulu on the A330, the Airbus equivalent of the Boeing 777. We purchased the tickets about three months in advance. With taxes and fees, the tickets came to about $1,900 per person. Our outbound flight left LAX at 6.05 with a scheduled arrival in Honolulu at 8.55 local time for a flying time of just under six hours. At LAX, Hawaiian Air flies out of the Tom Bradley Terminal, the vast international gateway that always seems to be under construction. Check-in was easy, but the walk to the gate was monumental. You go down long hallways, up and down escalators, just walking and walking. And then just when you think you'll never make it to the gate area, there it is. And it's pretty nice too. We spent most of the wait for boarding in a large quiet space adjacent to the gates with a wall of windows that look out on the tarmac. There's some good plane spotting to be done here. Lots of international carriers, colorful liveries, and the occasional A380 passing by. You board the A330 just behind the first class cabin. The cabin has three rows of seats in a 222 configuration. We had seats 3H and 3J in the back row. The Hawaiian music playing as you board is relaxing and helps you get in the mood for your trip. Also helping you get in the mood are the free drinks served after you board. There's a choice of three signature cocktails. I went with the Mai Tai, the classic rum, coconut, and pineapple mix. Hawaiian Air's version was good and strong. It definitely gave me a bit of a glow. The seat is thinly cushioned and set into a shell. The lie flat function is controlled with a little dial under the armrest. There's a storage compartment at the bottom of the seat back in front of you, along with a triangular footrest. There's enough legroom that if you're seated on the aisle as I was, the person on the window can pass in front of you easily. After takeoff, we were served macadamia nuts and a choice of beverages. I picked the Tropical Landing, one of the other signature cocktails, made with gin, guava, lemon, violet, and a touch of coconut. Compared with the Mai Tai, it was less sweet, more floral, a cleaner taste, very good, but the Mai Tai would still be my first choice. Shortly after we reached cruising altitude over the Pacific, the flight attendants handed out iPads for viewing the in-flight entertainment. The iPads go on this arm that you pull out from your seat and lock into position over your lap. It's a little flimsy, but it does the job. There's a decent selection of movies and TV shows, although from my vantage, it seemed like everyone in the cabin was watching Top Gun Maverick. Meal service commenced shortly thereafter. The menus were created by Wade Uioka and Michelle Carr Uioka of Honolulu's MW Restaurant. There was a choice of meatloaf and vegetable lasagna. I went with the meatloaf. They came with a very dense roll and a grilled asparagus salad. The meatloaf was a fine grain mix of beef and pork in a mushroom gravy that was pretty salty, as airplane food tends to be. The salt packets folded to resemble a miniature Hawaiian shirt make a good souvenir. Dessert was chocolate hapia crunch cake made with a kind of coconut milk pudding. It was light and airy and very good. Along with the meal, there's a modest selection of wine, beer, and aperitifs. I thought the meal was tasty and filling. Unfortunately, there were no options for my wife, who has celiac disease and can't eat gluten. One of the flight attendants was kind enough to retrieve a gluten-free snack box from the coach cabin. Normally it costs $8, but she let my wife have it for free. Since the flight was getting in at 9 in the evening, I didn't try to sleep. But even if you don't try to sleep, the lie flat seats help to distribute your weight more evenly and take some of the pressure off your posterior. It was very comfortable, except that my right leg kept slipping off the triangular leg rest. Other than some flowers next to the sink, the bathroom was just as cramped and grim as most airplane facilities. 
When we were about an hour out of Honolulu, the flight attendants handed out bags of sweet Maui onion potato chips. They were good, but a better snack selection would have been appreciated. Overall, I enjoyed the flight. Between the drinks and the food and the movies, it went by quickly. The flight crew was very friendly and helpful. The only downsides were the lack of a gluten-free hot meal and the limited snack selection later in the flight. Circumstances forced us to change our return flight, and we ended up flying out of Kona Airport on the Big Island. For the return flight, we flew on Airbus's 737 equivalent, the A321. Departure was 425 in the afternoon, with an arrival in LA of 1150 in the evening. Kona Airport has a charming little open-air terminal. There were no jetways, so you walk out on the tarmac to get to the plane. This gave us a chance to see Alaska Air's Toy Story livery on the way up the ramp. The A321 first class cabin has a 2-2 configuration similar to that of the Boeing 737. Legroom was adequate, although it's a little challenging for the window seat passenger to get by you if you're on the aisle. The seat has a footrest that's kind of useless. Some of the good things from the A330 were present on this flight, like the Hawaiian music when you board and the free drinks. After we climbed out of Kona, past black volcanic rock fields dotted with vegetation, and reached cruising altitude, meal service commenced. For this flight, the entree options were Asian-style braised chicken with bok choy and ginger rice, and fried cauliflower and couscous in a yellow curry sauce. I chose the chicken. It came with a Hawaiian sweet roll and a chopped salad. It was okay. The chicken thighs were pretty moist, but the sauce was unremarkable. Dessert was a tart and sweet Lilikoi guava chiffon cake. Lilikoi, as you learn quickly when you go to Hawaii, is another word for passion fruit. This flight had the same issue with the lack of gluten-free meals. To make matters worse, the flight attendant charged us eight bucks for the gluten-free snack box. Also, there were no snacks served later in the flight. There's no question that after Hawaiian Air's Airbus A330, the A321 is a bit of a letdown. The iPads they handed out were smaller, a little more beat up, and there was no stand to put them in. You just prop them up with the foldable case on your tray table. Without the lie flat seats, you really start to feel the weight of the world on your backside. The one thing better about this flight was the shorter flying time. Having the jet stream at your back means that the return flight is about 45 minutes shorter than the flight out. It wasn't long before the lights of Los Angeles came into view. After we landed at LAX, we circled the gate area a couple of times waiting for an outbound flight to leave. And then we had to face the walk from the gate to baggage. Perhaps because of the late hour, the walk was noticeably tougher in this direction. It's such a long walk that all the luggage was out and waiting by the time we got to baggage. And then we had to walk to a neighboring terminal to pick up the hotel's shuttle. So clearly, when it comes to first class service, Hawaiian Air's Airbus A330 is the superior product. Your best chance of finding one is on flights to and from Honolulu. The A321 is perfectly adequate for daytime flights, but if you're taking a red eye on your return to the mainland, then I would strongly recommend that you seek out the A330 with the lie flat seats. At least then, you have a chance of getting some shut eye before you arrive. And if you're flying in and out of LAX, be sure to wear comfortable sneakers for those long walks. Hope this helps. Thanks for watching.